When a user authenticates to the Cisco Web Security Appliance, a surrogate can be used to remember the user and thus reduce the number of authentication events. This is a beneficial configuration to employ because authenticating every request from every user will significantly increase resource usage, especially when protocols such as Kerberos are in use, which require CPU-intensive cryptographic operations. Authentication can also add latency. As shown in the proxy authentication video, multiple round trips are required to complete a single user authentication. The Web Security Appliance offers three surrogates that can be used to remember an authenticated user. These are configured in the User Identification Method section of the Identification Profile and include IP Address, Persistent Cookie, and Session Cookie. Note that the selected surrogate by default only applies to transparent proxy connections. In order to use the surrogate settings for explicit requests, check the box for Apply Same Surrogate Settings to Explicit Forward Requests. The length of time that a surrogate will be used is defined by the surrogate timeout option in the global authentication settings and is 3600 seconds or one hour by default. The first authentication surrogate available in the WSA is IP address. This is the default surrogate and it is the one that is most effective for limiting authentication events. Once a user completes authentication, the user's identity is associated with the source IP address and this will be used to make policy decisions for the duration of the surrogate timeout. For most organizations where users are assigned a specific computer and once logged in do not share access with other users, IP address surrogates work very well. But consider an organization where multiple users may access the same computer throughout the day. If one user has logged in and successfully authenticated to the proxy and then logged out, a second user could log into the same computer with a different account and continue to access the internet as the first user for the duration of the surrogate timeout because the only thing the WSA is checking is the source IP address. Similarly, if there is a NAT device between the clients and the WSA or DHCP leases are set very low and device IPs change often, IP surrogates are not going to work very well. In these cases, it makes sense instead to use a persistent cookie surrogate. With persistent cookies, once a user completes authentication, they receive a cookie from the WSA that can be used as an authentication token for subsequent requests. Because the cookie is persistent, it will remain available even if the browser is closed and reopened, and will be valid for any domain until the surrogate times out. Session cookie surrogates also use a cookie, but in a much more restrictive way. The cookie that is granted after successful authentication is only valid for a single session. This means that it includes the domain information for the page requested. For example, if the cookie was set when visiting Cisco.com, the cookie is only valid for Cisco.com. If the user opened a new tab and navigated to Facebook.com, they would be forced to authenticate again. There is a limitation to using cookie surrogates, which is very important to understand. Since the authentication token is in the form of an HTTP cookie header, it can only be used for unencrypted transactions. If a request is sent over HTTPS, the HTTP headers are inside a TLS tunnel and are not visible to the WSA. This may be confusing at first because the WSA is a decrypting proxy and offers the option to decrypt for authentication. But that option is only invoked for identities where IP surrogates are used. In order to enforce this for cookie surrogates, every request would need to be decrypted to check for the presence of a cookie. The source and destination IP address are not encrypted, and thus it is useful to check this against the list of authenticated users and only decrypt to authenticate if the IP is not mapped to a known user. I'd like to outline another very specific scenario that can be confusing when using a mix of surrogate types in the identification profiles. Consider a scenario where there are two identification profiles configured that use different surrogate types. The first profile matches the Firefox user agent string and uses IP surrogates. The second matches the Internet Explorer user agent string and uses cookie surrogates. If the first request is sent by Internet Explorer, the second identity will be matched and a cookie will be provided to the client for use as an authentication surrogate. Subsequent requests sent by Internet Explorer will use the cookie as expected and will continue to match the second identity. However, if the first request is sent by Firefox, 
the user's IP address will be used as a surrogate, as configured in the first identity. For the duration of the surrogate timeout, even requests sent by Internet Explorer will match the first profile. This is because the source IP address will be evaluated against the list of IP surrogates and matched before any other processing is performed against the request. This is sometimes confusing for customers, but it's completely by design. Therefore, we do not suggest mixing IP address and cookie surrogates in different ID policies.